lights, camera, action, bitches. Um, talking shit. Yeah. I don't have any makeup on. You know what? Lighting, you know, uh, it's a big thing and shit. And uh, check and believe, trust and believe that uh, Rhonda at Ray's Body Craze just said that if I walked in off the street, she'd think I was like 35, 38. You know? Um, fact, Stevie is magic. And this charade has got to stop, Joe Rogan. Um, tell you this, Mom. When I asked you for help because Steve Stevia is insinuating that I molested my kids when I told him you know what fact when you had your nervous breakdown you insinuated that I did and my oldest son's angry fucking remark my daddy don't touch me like that was proof that uh you know concoction a lie on your part you know you broke down uh it's over and now you're getting SSI monthly because of it and that led to destroying my family you know, when you try to steal my children, seriously. And uh, this charade has got to stop. It really does because, you know what? Um, Stevie cures, okay? I cured your cat. And the uh, fact of the matter is that if I had a lot of money, what I would do is feed all the homeless and the hungry in America. You know what? I could afford it. Why not? I could probably write it off of my taxes and shit, right? And then set a trend. And what I'm saying is that... Dan Quinn was, he was cursed at birth, okay? Because honestly, mom, you know what? I've lived in a family of almost financial hell and shit, okay? You know what? Uh, even my youngest agrees, okay? I've been trapped in a web and you know, it's not like Fred Riva didn't have million dollar opportunities after million dollar opportunity with me, okay? If he funds Chet Zawalik, okay, who said, what the fuck is your family doing pulling the plug, okay? Uh, Notre Dame, they didn't fucking settle yet, but they're not going to go in front of a jury with that, okay? You know what? Same group of girls lying the year before saying I punched a bitch 17 feet down the hall when it would have torn her fucking head off. And my girlfriend's testimony that probably would have been believed, been believed in a real court, okay, not a kangaroo court called Notre Dame. Um, she said that I got attacked. And my response was, get the fuck off me, cunt. You're not my mom. I don't have to take that shit from you, all right? Uh, but I did my entire youth growing up and worse. And you know what? Um, back to the matter is, people are, people are harassing me to the point where they're trying to get me to commit suicide or go postal, okay? Um, other people have sued and you know what they've won and fact stevia cures it cured your fucking cat okay your cat was analogous to an 87 year old woman who is in a hospital you know about to be you know what the plugs pulled put to sleep legally okay because she's better off dead and she came back into perfect health and then bob johnson same thing, 62 pounds and six tumors gone in four months. Then we had a falling out. <coughs> me saying if it wasn't for me, your fat ass was, you know, mobile. I, I was too direct, too fucking uh, and not respectful enough considering that he used to be a drill sergeant at Fort Benning, Georgia. And uh, you know what? So I stopped making pure and he had the same reaction that Peachy did. He ended up in the hospital, okay, when that fucking soap was reintroduced into his system, okay? And I'm going to go over there and make my case you know what uh i start making pure you take a couple sips and if you start feeling better and it doesn't fucking happen again we continue with pure and we don't recreate the potential peachy situation okay but fact dan quinn has discovered how to make this liquid that doesn't have any of the man-made toxins that we're killing this planet with in it okay uh it's pure h2o and uh it's different. It allows me to sit on my ass and eat like a pig for the past five months playing like 200,000 hands of poker and shit. And uh, you know what? Steve Stevia, seriously, um, you're committing a crime now, okay? Uh, you know that I didn't molest my kids, but you're insinuating that I did. It's kind of like when Tara Chow said that I had brown ooze dripping out of my penis. I said, before I discovered Stevia, my once golden, uh, could have been a football god superstar body, uh, 
you know, um, was failing miserably, okay? I had hard discs, painful underneath my nipples. They were getting bigger. I knew it wasn't any good. Um, I hadn't talked to Bob Johnson yet, who's doctors, because he could afford insurance. Um, you know what, they told him his were cancer. And uh, that's the state that I saw him in, you know, uh, for the first time since I'd seen him back in the Fort Benning day. And he was a blob of fat. And he was more than morose. He thought basically uh, either life was over because he had six breast tumors and transition phase of cancer. And he had just lost a bout, bout with prostate cancer. So you know what, it's too bad that um, you know, I didn't get there soon, Bob Johnson. But the fact is, I discovered how to make a liquid they're going to call holy water. Fact, not fiction, ladies. And fact, Aaron Brink, the violin indeed works. I get calls from lots of people, okay? Now, it's failed definitely on, I think, women that have been cut, you know, in the middle. You know, uh, whatever childbirth, something else, where they could have avoided central canals, you know, of nerves, gone in from the side, fodder for a potential future lawsuit, that, and uh, I'm going out to uh, an undisclosed destination to train Nick Williams, and if Seth Finn is there, him also, you know, and lots of it has to do with uh, the way you think about things. And uh, you know what? Back, I gave Scott Smith his hands career, man. Uh, changed his outlook, right? Gave him the ability to start hunting heads. And mom, it is time to stop this because back. If I was defended with money at Notre Dame, I would have been in NFL. Well, you know what? It, it would have been something they'd never seen before, you know? Uh, they called me a brother trapped in black skin or white skin and shit. And uh, um, that, I'm not gay. Everybody was commenting about Pat Pallet's cock, okay? We sat around in Marty Cotts room and we're like, Jesus Christ, man. Is that like sex or tempted murder, you know, when he fucking tries to put it in. And, uh, you know what? Does it make me less than um, him hitting on my girlfriend, Suzanne Michelle Roy, who, you know what? Uh, he hit on her, right? Because she was attractive. And, uh, you know what? That led to me thinking about it actually happening. And bam, you know, that shit turns me on. You know, sue me. I was born with a uh, right around seven inch cock, but I'm a grower. And since we're wasting trillions of fucking dollars on expensive shit that doesn't work, but gets people fucking uh, like kicked out of competitions and shit. You know what? That's partly what the violence for. You know what? Uh, take the pressure off your cock, because when it hits, it gives so much pleasure, you can wear her the fuck out, okay? Um, it gives her so much pleasure that you'd be able to get her to do things that you might have to answer for down the road, okay? Because it's that good. And, uh, you know, the fact that Karen Alberto, somewhere in Kansas City, uh, great lady. When I'm rich, I want her around me. And uh, back when I play the violin on her, you know what? It lit her pussy up into an orgasmic state, you know, and, you know, before we got together, I said, you know, it's like this, girl, uh, you're probably thinking, yeah, I'm full of shit, okay, but I'm going to create a day job of a woman for you right now, all right, when I first put my mouth on your pussy and the violin hits, okay, I'm going to take you to like five, six, ten orgasms, and then boom, I'm going to stop, you know what, and I'm going to look up, and I'm going to kind of check up and say, I wasn't I wasn't fucking lying, was I? And as soon as you start to respond, I'm gonna start doing it again. And I bet you, I bet you that shuts you up in a good way, okay? Not shut up, poo, you know? Um, yeah, and back, mom, Fred Riva, he had an opportunity to get on board with uh, Uriah Faber.
before Uriah was famous because I gave Uriah some of Tom Leahy's super nature pills that make athletes at the Olympic Training Center so fucking good that uh, they're like, damn, you know what? Uh, let's keep this hush hush so it doesn't get fucking uh, cut on and it's not managed, it, right? And uh, I gave him two bottles and he took them. Now, whether he actually ingested them, that kept it up to Fred because I told Fred, check it out. There's this kid that fucking uh, put me on my back uh, the first day, you know, in uh, in uh, Carlos's gym. You know what? I was there when he walked in, and uh, we had to just get done, you know, training and shit. You know, I'm tired and he's small, and boom, I'm on my back, and I can't get out. And I'm like, damn, you know what? Uh, I don't think you can fucking do anything with that, Uriah. But you know, this kid's strong, and then, you know what, um, that time when I gave that to you, you weren't the superstar that you are now, and Fred Riva invested millions of dollars in this company that's making these pills that are curing females, brother, okay, that have breast cancer, curing them fucking basically across the board, okay, seriously, male cancers, not so good, but a female that was in a wheelchair, and that's running a triathlon 18 months later, but the FDA is stocking Tom Leahy. They got an office right across the hall with monitoring devices and if he tells you how good his shit is, he gets in trouble and has to pay a lawyer for this shit to get out of jail, I think, right? Anyway, uh, <coughs> point is, they could have had your right favor, okay, for trinkets. They paid you 200 bucks, you know, a month to use this shit and they come out with your report and now you're on fucking TV and worldwide. Um, but you know what he said to me? He said, you would never have a part of the pill business, ever, okay? Um, and I was like, you know what? I just told you that Tim Brown is down the road, okay? Hall of Famer, he's juked a lot of guys on his way to touchdowns and shit, and he couldn't juke me. I dropped him for like a 12, 14 yard loss. And I actually made ground on him in the open field, okay? Um, when he was on reverse going for a touchdown, they ran it back like three times. I'm not the quickest guy, and I strain my groin. So, you know what? I'm doing a punching thing. But uh, when a groin is better, well, I can fucking flat out fly. Flat out. You know what? And uh, my plan was to jettison football because there are so many coaches out there that deserve to be murdered. I swear to God, I kid you not. And I guarantee you that Lou Holtz is at the top of many guys' list. Seriously, uh, uh, of people who deserve it because that motherfucking monster has ruined lives. And I'm glad that no one's done that because that means when my discoveries get famous and it's growing, Lou, okay? With or without your help, man. Uh, <laughs> fucking keeping us in the huddle. Uh, Pittsburgh already deployed at the line. First play in fourth quarter. They're going for a touchdown. We should have been lined up, ready to go, man. Waiting for them. Licking our fucking chops son and uh last second you're ordering me to stay home you didn't want people to see just how close i might get huh you know what man uh i chose boxing lou because i would have had you killed dog okay if i was you know seriously uh you know what but that was then this is now and so what i'd rather do is just make movies about you man showing the truth you fucking attacking your starting quarterback twice in practice. Um, oh yeah, Tony Rice was the best quarterback prospect I'd ever seen. I saw Tim Brown complaining about bruises because they were coming in like fucking cannon shots. Boom, right on the, I mean, and Tim was on the fly. It was so good, but it hurt, right? And that's where you teach touch. You know what? The mentality part of a football player, quarterback very important position, man. It's all in the head, right? And I saw Lou Holtz lose his mind and jump on Tony in a fit of fucking manic rage that we talked about when we were talking about leaving Lou Holtz. Guys, get the fuck out, going somewhere else because it didn't look good. And you know what? It's like this, Lou. I thought I'd give it a shot, man. I'll give it one year, okay? Uh, it's not like Dave Butler didn't apologize to me, night nigga, before the season started, okay? Oh yeah, you know what? Uh, Dave 
butler brought a case of beer to my room, Blue Holtz, and he apologized for playing in front of me. And Dave Butler, isn't this what I said? You know what, man? It's all good because, you know, I did fairly well in the bingo bounce. And you know what? In the future, I'm going to have five knockouts of Juanita. You know, Juanita's and shit, right? And that uh, sizable chunk of THC has already hit. And I haven't snorted any stevia yet, but the stevia already in my body has already counteracted it. And I'm starting to feel golden. And uh, I just got to make sure that I'm warmed up so I don't pull anything. And then, um, you know, if I wanted to, I could attack heads like I attacked Mon Lapua's head. You know what? Uh, but now with both hands. Seriously, you know what? Uh, when punches disappear and you can't see them and they hit heads, uh, it puts people on queer street. Seriously. And uh, you know what? The fact that fucking training shouldn't be a fucking fight and shit, right? Um, should be a learning experience. But you get busy and your nose might bleed and shit, right? And, uh, you know, fact is, Einstein, he had trouble tying his shoes and um, he was out there. Craig Tusha told me because he went to Princeton also and was treated special like Einstein. Like Craig got a 1600 on his SAT, right? And uh, uh, not many people do that, so we got a full ride to Princeton. And uh, <laughs> remember Craig when you said that I could have started at any position on the field, I could have taken over, basically. Uh, and I was like, not quarterback, and like, no, yeah, probably even that. I've seen you throw the football, dude, okay? Um, and, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not like I didn't tell Craig one time, trying to prove my smarts, that I'd seen fucking mice turn into raging fucking beasts. You know what? When uh, there wasn't enough space. You know, feel me? Inner city, Detroit, Chicago. LA, New York. Yeah, the dynamics already proven in animals, mice. They go crazy, batshit crazy, uh, raping, uh, murdering, eating babies, tearing them apart, going to war. You know what? It didn't matter how much food there was, okay? It was space because I tried to keep a heavy curve, Doris Riva, and you gave me that present. You know, two mice, a male and a female, and the smallest fucking cage. And not a, you know what, Dan? Uh, uh, this is to teach you how to work, son, because uh, if you don't get busy in mow lawns, um, fucking, you're not going to be able to have four habit trails hooked up. You know what? So you didn't have to take babies down to the meat market, you know, and face snakes. And uh, you know what? It's a fact. <laughs> uh, that's where I learned it. And I'm brilliant. And the fact that Fred Riva is is loathed by people that I tell the truth about him too. You know, the fact that he handcuffed me to a tree for four and a half fucking hours when I was eight years old, and the fact that um, it was a continual attack, okay? Uh, not after fucking 12 and shit when I easily broke his fucking grip wrestling on the floor, okay? But you know what, he didn't like me. And the fact that he allowed John Quinn to pull the plug on a for sure million dollar win, that's what it was, okay? Uh, I said, fuck this, I'm going to go boxing, man, and, and come out above it all, you know, and then just tell people the truth and shit, right? Um, and then uh, I got fucked up. Rodney King, straight up. <laughs> Ned Bolkar, remember when I called you and I said, Ned, man, I just want a state title, heavyweight champion, golden gloves, man. I came over to your house, showed you the fucking uh, the shit to prove it, right? And then... You know, you said, yeah, let's get together and uh, meet at this club, right, that was just opening or something. And I walk up, and uh, there's a line, like, fucking stretched around the block and shit. And so um, I'm like, fuck this. I walk up to the cops, and I say, excuse me, officer. I said, I'm supposed to meet a friend of mine that I played football with in college, okay, and not asking me to get in, but could I actually just take a walkthrough? You know, they do it in California. I didn't say that. Uh, to see if you see your person, and then you wait in line, and you don't waste it, the time, shit, right? And uh, you look at me like, need it, and I'm like, wow. So, you know, uh, I got set up for a case mistaken identity, really, okay? Because I came back the next night, and uh, 
do the same club to be dead. And these cops came up to me and they said, you're out of here, okay? And uh, I was like, out of here for what, man? And they said, well, calling us fucking punks is a good start. And see, there was a white guy going around a highlight event telling the cops to fuck out that he boxed for Coach Pat Burns, right? Uh, he wasn't at Gibson Park with Trevor Burbick, who I sparred enough with, you know, could I have made some money, Trevor? You know what? Uh, if I got comfortable, you know, and then uh, I, I, I could do lapuas and shit and hunt heads and I'm white and shit. And uh, this guy that I handled easily um, in sparring in Gibson Park, a brother who fought professionally, was actually that defecting Cuban that won the national Golden Glove title, Pan Ams, whatever, his first, first, first fight and shit. And Keith, that little brother, uh, he came up to me and he said, you know what, <laughs> you could have fucking beat that dude, okay? And uh, he just won the national silver gloves and shit. So anyhow, uh, yeah, I get Rodney King and I'm sitting in my fucking, uh, <sighs> my seat, okay? Uh, I'm flex cuff, hands behind me, and this cop is clowning me like I'm some fucking punk, and I just want to state, and I said, dude, it's not my fucking fault that, you know what, uh, you suck at whatever you did athletically, and that's why you became a cop, right? Don't take it out of me, you know? Seriously, you know? <laughs> and we got into it, and I said, yeah, man. I said, I, I, I firmly believe that, you know, if there was sanity on this planet, <laughs> that your parents would have been sterilized and they would have been given the opportunity if they were worthy of raising a superior child like with my genes, you know what I'm saying? You know, that played it in their name and just want to state and shit and don't hate me for it. And this motherfucker came over, boom, and fucking punched me as hard as he could in the John shit. He tried to knock me out and it sent me out of that chair, right? But I was laughing and I said, you're a fucking woman, homeboy. You know what? Bitches hit harder than that, dog. Is that all you got? And uh, you know what? They went to work. And finally, they just twisted my leg to the point where they had to immediately take me to the doctor. The Miami Heat doctor, as a matter of fact. Um, you know what? Because I looked at the elephant man. And according to him, they had just torn every ligament in my knee and separated the fascia from the bone to the point where I couldn't walk on it fucking normally for like six months much less run and shit. I mean, you know, it was bad. And, uh, yeah, so I asked Fred Riva, can we hire an attorney? He said, yep, get a job, pay for one. And it's like, God damn, man. You know what? Uh, you're trying to keep me back my fucking entire life and shit. You know what? Uh, so I came up to Sacramento, okay, to readjust and got sucked into that other fucking reality called life. You know what? The people on the other side of the tracks that aren't athletes. You know what? Yeah, I've done a lot of methamphetamine, okay? I was actually hooked up to the point where when I ran across the uh, fucking methamphetamine cook who's a god, okay? And he showed me his shit that went out, you know, to like the public and shit. Uh, I mean, top tier. And I showed him mine, he was like, damn, you know what? And I'm like, oh yeah, man. Uh, you know what, I'm cool. And I'm also a fighter. And so, you know what, I, I just get plugged wherever I go, you know? Um, kind of like Mark Brandon, mom. Seriously, Mark Brandon came over to the house one time and he dropped off four pounds of marijuana and two or three ounces of coke, right? And he said, there you go, man. We'll talk about how much you owe me later. I got it on the front. It was like so fucking $300 an ounce for the cocaine and it was top shelf, right? And then um, like $400 a pound or a hundred, whatever. But uh, I got a deal and uh, you know, that's when I was getting charged rent as I was getting kicked out of the University of Notre Dame, which was really my first million dollar opportunity. When everybody who hears that story fucking uh, knows the truth. You know what? Uh, you panicked and you chose money. And you know what? Um, you know, what are we going to do about it now that I have this discovery that Stevie alone, when Alex Sonoma put a lot of stevia in water and drank it really sweet, okay? Uh, eight teaspoons per gallon sweet, uh, a potential tumor, vanished in 14 days. It was one and a half years old. It was a potential career ender. Maybe, definitely, okay, if it didn't stop getting bigger, okay? You know what? Uh, and then she'd have to get cut, and you know what? Uh, 
vanished, you know, along with uh, Diego's presence on uh, fucking Stevia. And don't blame Stevia for you getting fucking handled by a guy that knew how to fucking punch against a lefty dog, okay? And it's not my fault uh, that you got beat. It's my fault that you got beat for fucking five rounds because Stevie gave you the endurance to take a fucking ass with me, dog, okay? And seriously, it's not your fault if you are, in fact, gay or bisexual. Um, that was also a natural occurrence in this animal herd. Animals started going gay, you know what, trying to keep the population down. And uh, you know what? The religious fanatics are gunning people who actually, you know, give women their right. Uh, uh, they're not gonna pay to adopt it, okay? Or feed it, or clothe it, you know what? Uh, but they'll put you to death for trying to fucking uh, let it grow from a polywalk. You know what I'm saying? Uh, anyhow, you know, fact, not fiction. If we don't stop reproducing at the rate that we are right now okay we're threatening to crash this planet right now all right that's because everything on this planet is designed for like a one use okay uh there's no return dog shit at the park should be put back into the earth you know what that made the nutrients that generated it same thing with baby shit but we've thrown it away in toxic plastic bags that will foul the planet for a thousand years ten thousand uh when we could use hemp plastic, okay? Uh, do the same thing, but healthy. So it wouldn't fucking make things worse. It would actually clean it up. But you know what? That's not the cards, David Brent. And uh, Pat, put steaming water in blend, man. And you can actually make water heavier than it was before. Uh, back in the day, uh, when I tested it, yeah. 3.5 grams heavier by removing all the fucking uh, soap and this little 3.5 milligram bottle was that much heavier and massive doses of that did the peachy miracle six full so like i seen a tumor in her throat she was gone she was landlocked in the bed my youngest son vividly remembers it uh peachy uh was sick uh pissing the bed you're done and uh you know what my discovery you fucking reverse the curse in a piss in the bed 17 year old cat to where she was fucking trying to go outside and explore at night. And remember when I had to shut the fucking the kitty door so you couldn't do it because I didn't want her getting stomped out? You know what? Uh, she's my Mona Lisa. And uh, fact, Mom, I'm getting attacked because I told the truth about what happened when you broke down, okay? Uh, you insinuated that I touched my oldest son and it's like, wow, you know what? Uh, fact, I'll, I'll take this down potentially, okay? Are you gonna threaten to kick me out and shit? It's like this. I'm sitting on a discovery that brought your cat back, did Bob Johnson. It's catching on. And when it does, if I don't get any help from fucking, uh, like, Doris Riva uh, for the stevia to prove my miracle, uh, everybody that's following directions is like, damn, you know what? But there's some stupid people out there that are fucking uh, doing things that, at the very least, will get them taken to court and potentially thrown in jail. You know what, Steve, for fucking on purpose... Um, saying that I'm a child molester when in fact that's not true uh, <laughs> you know what uh, I would have been done a long time ago okay by my friends and that if you go to jail um, put it like this dog if we were on a level 4 yard together I would openly fucking announce it uh, I'm going to fucking attack you dude okay you know what nothing you can do about it because of what you did, and basically you didn't give a fuck about, you know, the mental trauma that I was causing my kids, that Stevie Pedia page, when Dan Quinn's a fucking football goddamn god, homeboy, okay, if it's not for Lou Holtz, you know what, uh, leading me on a path to fucking actually figure out that most guys that weren't born with any fucking thing special like you are fairly fucking cool, okay, um, you know what, um, <laughs> To me, athletically, dude, uh, on the football field, let's stack up the plays, dog. You're a servant, okay? You're a lackey. And uh, you know what? The fact that I didn't say I could last even an entire practice, okay, um, with the collisions. But you know what? Yeah, when my groin gets 100%.